you have your Bibles, turn with me to Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15, we are getting to the end of Romans. And I have made the announcements a couple of times, uh, and I have had several people say they are looking forward uh, to going through the book of Revelation next. Uh, so we will finish up Romans and then just head right into the book of Revelation. Today I want to speak to you on the subject of caring for others. Caring for others. We who are saved, we who have been born again, we who are representatives of Christ Jesus need to care for others. There are so many hurting people around us. You just look on the news and I'm telling you, I really don't even like to watch the news anymore because it's negative, 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 negative. And folks, there are many people that God puts in our lives that are hurting and we need to uh, minister to these people. We need to, uh, you know, stop. And, and sometimes we are so busy in our world that we don't even recognize people who are hurting. And the Bible here in chapter 15 of Romans tells us, tells us to care for others. If you have a bulletin and want to follow along with us, number one, consider one another. Consider one another. Folks, we're family. We are family. We are part of the body of Christ. We are part of God's family, and we should consider one another. Number two, receive one another. We're not all alike. We don't all think the same. We don't all have the same spiritual gift. But Paul is writing to the church in Rome and telling them, and really there was three different groups in the church in Rome. You had the Jews, uh, the Christian Jews. You had the Christian Gentiles. And you had the Christian Romans. And you're talking about three different sects of people and three different uh, upbringings. And, and some of them weren't raised in uh, you know, in religion and in the Jewish religion and in Christianity. And sometimes those who were, you know, in Christianity their whole life would judge others or get on people who had just started their walk with Jesus Christ. So we need to consider one another. We need to receive one another, and we need to believe one another. Folks, I'm telling you, we should encourage one another in the faith. We need to be uh, busy being an encouragement to others. You know, God has always been deeply concerned about the unity of his people. By the way of salvation, he has affected a real spiritual oneness in his church. This reality of conversion should impact the life of the church by being a model of true unity for others. Jesus, God's only begotten Son, is concerned about the unity of believers also. God's eternal plan is that all believers will be unified in Him through faith in His Son. Everyone who belongs to the Lord will be united in a great and glorious fellowship with Him and with each other. The unity of the church is also a concern of the Holy Spirit. So we see God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit wants unity in the church. And I am not preaching this series because, series because uh, or even this message, because there's not unity. As far as I know, there is total unity in our church. If there is a sector, if there's division, I don't know about it. All right, and if you if it is, then you see uh, Steve or Cody. Okay, don't tell me. I just <laughs> I just want to keep believing. And folks, I'm serious about this. I believe God is here, and I believe this with all my heart. Satan divides, and God unites. If we will stay with the singing of the word, if we will stay with the preaching of the word, if we will depend on God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit, then we will love one another. It is a spiritual power, the Holy Spirit, we have in common with other believers. Satan will do anything and use anyone he can to disrupt the fellowship of the local church. Let's look at scripture, this scripture text with these thoughts in mind. Caring for one another. One, number one, consider one another. Romans 15.1, we then who are strong 
And Paul is including himself in the we. Okay, Paul is a strong Christian. Paul wrote one third of the New Testament. Paul planted many churches, uh, one in, you know, all the, there, there were just so many churches. I don't even have time to go through the churches that he had planted. But he is including himself in this. We then who are strong, and he's talking about strong in the faith. You probably grew up in church. You memorized scripture uh, in, in, you know, when you were younger in vacation Bible school. Anybody remember sunbeams? Okay, I see folks that remember that. RAs and GAs. We had all these things, all right? Vacation Bible school, all right? Then we who are strong ought to bear the scruples of the weak. And he uses an interesting phrase here, scruples. And again, he's talking about the way of thinking, okay? The way someone thinks. Someone who has not been raised in church doesn't realize everything church people are supposed to do. If they had not been indoctrinated, if their parents didn't go to church, and you know, they hadn't had that privilege. Folks, to me, it's a privilege to go to church. It's an honor to go to church. It's a blessing to go to church. My parents raised me in church in, very, in a very young age. I was taught to tithe. You know, when I was little, it started with a nickel. I got a nickel to take to church. Then as I got older, I got a dime. Then I worked my way up to a quarter. And then the last thing I gave as a kid was a dollar every Sunday. I got a dollar every Sunday from my parents, and I had tithe. And that is just how we were raised, all right? But not everybody was raised that way. Not everybody was taught that way. And look what it says. We who are strong ought to bear the scruples of the weak and not to please ourselves. Folks, we don't need to go around judging and, 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 you know, picking on people or giving people our religious resumes or saying, I can't believe you do that, okay? There are people, I'm just telling you, they, they haven't grown up in church. And Paul was just saying, us strong folks need to consider them. We need to care for them. And it says, and not to please ourselves. Folks, we're not here to please ourselves we're here to please God. We're here to help people get closer to God. We are here to witness to people and tell them about God. We're here as strong Christians to mentor others who are not strong and was not raised in church. We are supposed to help the underdog, okay? That's what he is saying. Verse 2, let each of us please his neighbors for his good. And again, we're not talking about doctrine here. If there's a doctrine problem, we have to settle that issue. Okay, if it's the Word of God, we have to settle the, that issue. But when it came, and you know what he was talking about earlier, about food, okay, food and days that you worship, and these things that are just minor things, all right? Don't worry about those things. Don't point those things out to others. As they grow in the Lord, they're going to figure those things out. Let each of us please his neighbor for his good leading to edification. Now, how many of you are here today and you enjoy criticism? Would you raise your hand? You just enjoy criticism. So we got some hands here, okay? Nobody, I will say this, enjoys or likes criticism. Okay, and there are ways that we can say things. There are actions that we can do that can can really still, you know, let people know that we love them. And that's what he is saying here. Don't beat them over the head with the Bible. Don't judge them. All right. Lead by example is what he is saying for his good leading to edification. Folks, we need to encourage others. We need to encourage others. Verse 3, for even Christ did not please himself. What did Christ do? What was his whole purpose here? He came to die, folks. He came to please his heavenly Father. Even at the age of 12, he told his mom and dad, I am about my father's business. 
So we need to focus on our ministry and do what God tells us to do, but keep encouraging those. And it's not that they're lagging behind. They just don't know. They weren't raised in church, all right? They weren't raised with the Bible in their hand. They haven't memorized Scripture. But Christ, uh, please God, but as it is written, the reproaches of those who reproached you fell on me. He actually is quoting Psalm 69 here. And you know what Jesus is saying? Jesus is saying, I took God's punishment. See, the Jews hated him. The Jews, uh, you know, opposed him. The Jews beat him up. The Jews, you know, crucified him on a tree. So he's saying, I know what it's like. I know what it's like. I took that on. And folks, that's what he's saying. Jesus took up for us and we need to take up for others, especially new Christians and young Christians. We need to take them under our wings. We need to love them. We need to show them the love of God. Then verse 4, for whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that we through the patience and comfort of scriptures might have hope. What is he saying? He's talking about the Old Testament. There are examples of Old Testament, where Old Testament prophets mentored young men in their faith. There are scriptures that tells us uh, in the Psalms that we need to have patience for others. People are not going to do the right thing every time. Have patience. They're learning. They will get it, but maybe not at the speed you think they will. And comfort of scriptures might have hope. I am telling you, everyone in this sanctuary needs hope in their life. Hope is so important. It is so important. And sometimes we can discourage weaker or new Christians because we're just hard on them. And Paul is saying, don't do that. And then verse 5, now may the God of patience and comfort grant you to be like-minded towards one another, according to Christ Jesus, that you may be with one mind, one mouth, glorify the the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He uses those words again, patience, the God of patience. He is patient with you. He comforts you, and we need to do that with others. And then he says, according to Christ, in one mind. Do you know that if we would make this a goal in our life, I'm telling you, we would make the right decision every time. Folks, I pray this often. I pray this often. God, I need the mind of Christ. I need the mind of Christ. I don't know about you, but sometimes my mind just wanders. Random things just pop in my head. And folks, I am learning, don't say everything you think, okay? You're not helping others, and you're not helping yourself by everything you think. And, and I've heard people say this, well, if I think I might as well say it. Well, I'm telling you, that's, that's wrong. Somebody has taught you wrong. Because if I'm thinking it, I don't have to apologize to anybody but God himself. But if I say it out loud and it's something that I shouldn't say, I need to apologize to everyone that heard what I said. If I truly want the mind of Christ. Folks, Paul was given us a key to walking with God, to being spiritual according to the Word of God. We need the mind of Christ in our life. In one mouth, glorifying the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. What, what should our lives do? Our lives should glorify God. Our lives should point people towards Jesus. And, and our goal should be edification, building these weaker Christians up, loving these uh, young Christians unconditionally. And folks, the Word of God is our divine authority. Ephesians 4, hold your finger there and go to Ephesians 4 with me. Paul, writing to the church of Ephesus, Ephesians 4.1. And the title there, if you have 
uh, the New King James is walk in unity. All right, walk in unity. I therefore, a prisoner of the Lord. Hey, I was arrested by God. Hey, Saul, who was Paul, knew what it was to be arrested by God. God got his attention on the road to Damascus. God got my attention. If you're saved, he got your attention also. I therefore, a prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling which you were called. What are we? We're believers. What are we? We are followers of Christ. What are we? Christians. What are Christians? Christ in us. Can people see Christ in you in all areas of your life? That's what Paul is saying. With all lowliness, humility, Christians should be humble. And gentleness, here's the word. Well, you know, I just, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a matter of fact, I'm direct. You know, if they don't like me, then that's just tough. Man, you shouldn't have that attitude, folks. All right. We need the attitude of love, of humility, of kindness. Notice the next word, not uh, humility and gentleness. Okay. It's just like our kids. And I'm just telling you, you have to watch how you discipline kids. We should not discipline out of anger. You are teaching a behavior if you do that. And I'm telling you, even if I was raising my kids, I had to guard my anger issues. And again, I'm not trying to dog my father, but he just cleared spots. He gave whoopings, and then he asked questions. All right? And I'm not talking about spankings. And I don't even know what a timeout was. Okay? Couldn't even tell you what that was. So he's saying, be gentle with long suffering. There's the patience. Bearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit of the bond of peace. Now, folks, we have to keep unity in the body of Christ. We have to, again, not all do the same thing and be the same thing and try to clone one another. That's not what we're talking about. Once the church makes a decision, we need to go with that decision. We vote. That's why we have body life. We'll have body life tonight. But even if you didn't agree, if the majority agrees, we need to move on. Look at verse 4. There is one body. What is that? The body of Christ. We're all in the body of Christ. One spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. As you were called unto one hope, that hope is in Jesus Christ. One Lord, Lord, King of kings, Lord of lords. One faith, one baptism. You say, you were baptized? I was baptized three times. Well, the way I see it scripturally, I got dunked in water twice, and I have a scriptural baptism. You need to be scripturally baptized. One God, one Father of all, who is above all, through all, and in you all. So what is he saying? Paul is saying, man, unity is important. It is important. We need to consider one another. Number two, receive one another. Receive one another. Look at verse 7. Therefore, receive one another just as Christ received us. What does that mean? Accept one another. Okay, we all don't like the same things. We all don't look alike. We all don't like the same food. All right? I'll say, I'll say a certain kind of food uh, to Steve, and he'll say, Ugh, I don't, I don't want to go there today. All right? Even though I think it's pretty good food. All right? It's just our taste, folks. Don't major in the minor things. Receive one another. Look at this. As Christ received us to the glory of God. God received you. And you need to give God the glory for everything done in your life. Look at verse 8. Now I say that Christ Jesus has become a servant to the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made by the fathers and that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy as it is written. What is he saying? Paul is saying Jesus basically ministered to the Jew. His whole life he was around the synagogues and he was around the Jew. And, I, and every once in a while, I understand a Samaritan is a Gentile. 
But those were exceptions in his ministry. And that's what the Word says. That's what the Old Testament say, says, and that's what it's saying. His ministry was to the Jew, and that was so the Jews would get saved, and the Acts chapter 2 church would launch itself out into the Gentile world. So he's saying there's nothing wrong with that, okay? But look what he says. His mercy is written, for this reason I will confess to you among the Gentiles and sing to your name. Once we have been saved, once Christ comes into our lives, we need to minister to others, whether they are Jew or Gentiles. And when you think about Gentile ministry, I'm telling you, Paul and Peter was the one that came along in Acts and ministered Peter first to the Gentiles and the issue with Cornelius. And then Paul came along and did the same. So you see these things that he's saying. It is a promise that God had made in the Old Testament, and it was coming true in the New Testament. My friend, God never lies. God always keeps his promises. What started with the ministry of the Jews and Abraham went on for, for centuries. And then when Jesus came, everything changed. And folks, I am telling you, God believes this, and I believe with this with all my heart. Everyone everywhere needs Jesus Christ. I don't care what religion it is. I don't care the color of your skin. I don't care what nation you were born in. I don't care what your roots are. I, I don't care what language you speak. Folks, we need to speak the Jesus language to everyone. Go to Acts 10. Acts 10. We'll show you this in Scripture. Acts 10. Verse 34. Acts 10, 34. Then Peter opened his mouth. I was talking about preaching to Cornelius here. And he said, in truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality. Well, folks, I shouldn't even have to read any, another verse, but, I, but I'm telling you the gospel's in the rest of these verses. God says we should accept everyone because he accepts everyone. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how you look. It doesn't matter what you have on. It doesn't matter if tattoos, piercings. It doesn't matter. God loves you. God wants you saved, and we need to minister to everyone. But in every nation who fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him. Folks, the gospel is for everyone. And the word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ. And do you understand how hard it was in the Old Testament to believe in something that had not taken place yet? Jesus wasn't even born during Old Testament times. But yet they had to believe in a coming Messiah. They had a lot more faith than we do, folks. But it was there. It was in the prophets. It was in the Old Testament. There was a coming Messiah, and they had to believe that to be saved. Preach peace through Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That word you know, which was proclaimed throughout all Judea, and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. Do you realize that you have healing powers? Do you realize that? Do you know what the Word of God is? It is healing to the soul. Man has no healing power when it comes to my hands. And I can pray and God can answer prayers, but I'm telling you, it is God that heals. God's the healer. But when we minister scriptures to others, we are helping heal their soul. Folks, I am telling you, there are people that are lost. There are people that are that they're just in distress. There are people that don't have hope. And the Word of God 
helps them. And we can help with that. That's what Jesus did. Jesus healed folks. And he healed them physically too. Verse 39, And we are witnesses of all these things which he did, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they killed by hanging on a tree. In him God raised up the third day and showed him openly, not to all people, but to witnesses chosen before by God, even to us who ate and drank with him after he arose from the dead. What is Peter doing? Folks, he's giving his personal testimony. Peter's saying, I'm telling you, I know Jesus. I hung out with Jesus. I saw what he did. I saw the miracles. I know it's real. And it's real. And, and he spent the rest of his life and died for the cause of Christ. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that it is he who was ordained by God to be the judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets witness that through his name, whoever believes in him will receive the remission of sin. Oh, listen to me. If you're here today and you don't know Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, the only way to be saved is through Jesus Christ the Lord. You have to ask forgiveness of your sins. You have to confess your sins before Christ. You have to believe that Jesus Christ was born of a virgin. You have to believe that he lived a perfect life. And you have to believe he died on a cross for your sins. That's what the gospel is. And on the third day he arose. And because he arose, we can have eternal life. Oh, folks. That's why we receive one another. If Jesus did not reject people, you tell me one person that came up to Jesus and Jesus said, you know what, I don't think I'm going to help you today. I don't think I'm going to help you. Folks, Jesus looked for people to help. And folks, we as Christians, there are hurting people out there and we need to receive them and we need to receive one another. Folks, the Bible tells us, man, your brothers and sisters in Christ, you ought to get along with those folks. All right. Number three, consider one another, receive one another, and believe one another. Look back in our text. And I'll finish this here. Verse 11. Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Loud him in you peoples. Just as Steve was having us praise and, and sing scripture and say scripture. We need to do that all together. That is what worship is. And Isaiah says, he's quoting Isaiah 11.10 10 here, uh, there shall be a root of Jesse, and he shall rise to reign over the Gentiles, and him the Gentiles shall have hope. So he's saying everything that God said in the Old Testament came true in the New Testament. And if it's come true, we need to do it. Number three, verse 13. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may uh, abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And do you know why sometimes we don't cut people slack? You know why we're hard on people sometimes? Because we are walking in the flesh and not in the Spirit. Folks, we need to walk in the Spirit all the time. Notice his words here. Man, he just leaves on a positive note. Now, may the God of hope, God gave you hope. God gave you hope. And it's not a hope, so I hope I'm saved. I, 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 I would not, I, it would not come out of my mouth, I hope I'm saved. Folks, we need to know that we're saved. But because of the hope, we have belief that, you know what, just what we said earlier, Jesus Christ is coming back for his church. That is the hope that we have. Fill you with all joy. What's joy? Here's how you get joy in your life. Put Jesus first. J, put others second. O, and put yourself last. Yourself last. And I am telling you, when you start, uh, you know, uh, giving yourself away, when you start doing ministry, when you start helping the hurting I'm telling you, you forget about the things that are going on in your own life. And folks, God has blessed us. He has blessed us so much. 
The God of hope fill you with joy and peace. And peace comes from knowing God, folks. Knowing God in believing, there's that word, that you may abound in hope, not just have hope, that hope, your cup of hope is running over by the power of the Holy Spirit. Folks, it needs to overflow. It needs to overflow with hope. And that hope that you believe in gives others hope also. Romans 5, go back to Romans 5. Romans 5, verse 1. Romans 5, 1, Therefore, having been justified by faith, okay, that's salvation, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That peace is knowing that we're saved. Knowing that when we die, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, through whom we also have access by faith to this grace in which we stand. Our access to God is through prayer. Folks, if somebody asks you to pray for them, you need to pray for them. You need to write their names down. You need to have a prayer list, a prayer list in your Bible. Access of faith by this grace which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations. Hey, let me help you with life. Okay? Tribulations are going to come. They're going to happen, folks. You're going to be smooth sailing down the road, and things will be going well, and I'm telling you, a storm will come up in your life, in the life of your family. He's saying tribulations will come. And I believe with all my heart, the closer we get to the coming of the Christ, the more, the, the closer they come together. All right, see, Satan, Satan just wants us to be miserable in our lives. Satan just wants us to fear in our lives. Tribulation has come knowing that tribulations produces perseverance. Folks, anything that won't kill you will make you a stronger person. Any situation of life, and I know we say it, I can't handle it, I can't handle it. You are saying the right thing, but you are not thinking right. I can do all things through who strengthens me. So your flesh can't handle it. Your logical mind can't figure it all out. But with Christ in us, we can have perseverance. And do you know why we go through? Read second, uh, or read, yeah, Second Corinthians three. Read it. What it says. We go through these things so that we can help those who have went through these things. Our experience and our perseverance helps others who are going through that. Perseverance, tribulation, perseverance, and perseverance, character. Hey, God cares about character. Your character is doing the right thing. Doing the right thing. And character, what's the word? Hope. Hope. Now, hope does not disappoint. Folks, I'm telling you, God is not going to let you down. God has not let you down. You haven't got everything you want, and, and bad things happen to good people. Read Romans 8, 28. But I'm telling you, he's doing it for a purpose and a reason. And that is helping us glorify God in everything that we do. Now, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has given it to us. Folks, I believe we as Christians... We who are strong can overcome anything that happens in our lives with God's help, through prayer, through spending time in the Word, with being around other Christians who edify us and encourages us. That's what the body of Christ is for. That's why Paul says, when one hurt, we all need to be hurting. When one has joy, we all need to be happy. When one has, you know, just, just has something good happen to them, we should rejoice with them. And finally, let's, let's look at the last part. Back, and I finish with this. That you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. God 
places the Holy Spirit inside of you so that you can help others. That's what he do. That's what he does. And the first thing, and the first thing that we need to help others with, folks, is salvation. When we sense that someone may not be saved, and I'm not saying we judge the person, but when I get certain answers given to me, when I ask them, if you were to die today, would you go to heaven? If they say, I hope so, and I'm telling you, we're going to have a gospel conversation. I don't want to le- live on it. Well, I hope so. All right? We need to know so. And that's what Paul is saying. The bottom line in Romans, all of Romans, the first part of the doctrine has to do with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We need to first and foremost be sharing Christ with others. And then those who are hurting, we need to be quick to help the hurting. Romans 1, you know this verse, and I close with this. Romans 1, verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation to everyone who believes, to first the Jew and also to the Greek, for in it is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Faith. Do you know Jesus Christ is your personal Lord and Savior? Do you know Him? Are you sure about your salvation? If you are not sure, folks, I implore you, I beg you to come today. Come to Jesus Christ, and He'll make a difference in your life. And are you considering others? Are you caring for others? Do you have your own ministry? to where you look for people that are hurting. Man, you can write a card. You can uh, you know, call them on the phone. You can uh, message them. There's just so many ways we can connect with the hurting. And folks, everyone gets down. Everyone, you know, Satan will attack and things in their lives will just go haywire. And we as Christians need to do the spirit of encouragement with people with people. Father, thank you for this day. and God, we just thank you for your word. God, it is yes, it is right, it is amen. And God, I pray that we would care for one another. God, I pray that, Lord, that when you send somebody by that we can tell our hurting, Lord, that we'll do whatever we can to help. And God, I just pray, Lord, that we would also be sensitive to the Holy Spirit God, I pray that we wouldn't be ashamed and that we would share the gospel and we would encourage folks in the faith. God, we have family members that don't go to church. We have family members that aren't saved. We have neighbors and we have friends. We have work associates that need hope in their lives. And God, I pray that you would use us, us, the seasoned veterans, the strong to help the weak. So God, this is your invitation. This is your time. God, I pray that you would do with it what you choose. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. Would you stand to your feet? If God has spoken to you in any way, would you come?